The domain of a function is the set of values that function can accept as an argument. The range of a function is the set of all values that a function can return as output. So when we graph a function, the domain corresponds to possible values along the horizontal axis, input arguments for which the function has a value. And the range corresponds to possible values along the vertical axis, values that the function can evaluate to. And our alphabetical memory aid works again. D comes before R, and X comes before Y, so you can remember which is which. For many functions, such as f of x equals x plus 1, there's no constraint as to the values x can take, nor to the values the function returns. So for this function, the domain and range are both the set of real numbers. I'm going through some simple functions quickly to show different types of constraints, because some functions have limitations. For example, f of x equals x squared. The domain is the set of real numbers because x can be any value. But the range is limited to real numbers greater than or equal to zero because squared numbers won't be less than zero. When f of x equals 1 over x, the domain and range are both constrained since neither can ever be zero. For f of x equals square root of x, both domain and range are constrained to real numbers greater than or equal to zero. In general, domains are only constrained when the function's variable is in the denominator of a fraction, or when it's within a square root. Constraints on the range depend on the nature of the function. Now let's turn our attention to the domain and range of the trig functions. We mentioned all of these cases when we graphed the functions in the last three videos, but we'll formalize our findings here. For sine and cosine, the domain has no constraint. We can take the sine and cosine of any angle, from negative infinity to positive infinity. There aren't any fractions or square roots to consider, so the domain is all real values for theta. But the range is constrained to real numbers between and including negative 1 to 1. The other four trig functions have domain constraints because they all involve fractions. Let's start with the domain of cotangent and cosecant. Cotangent is cosine over sine, and cosecant is 1 over sine. So these functions are both undefined, that is, they have asymptotes, at angles where the sine is 0, since sine is the denominator. Sine is 0 at the left and right edge of the circle, at 0 and pi radians. So these two functions are undefined at every angle coterminal with 0 and pi radians, that is, Theta can be any angle except a multiple of pi radians. n pi is a way to say multiples of pi, since we say n can be any integer. Now let's consider the domain of tangent and secant. Tangent is sine over cosine, and secant is 1 over cosine. So these functions are both undefined, that is, they have asymptotes, at angles where the cosine is 0. This is at the top and bottom of the circle, at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 radians, and at all angles coterminal with these. So the range excludes positive and negative odd numbers of pi over 2 radians. 2n plus 1 pi over 2 is just a way of saying an odd number of pi over 2, like 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, since we say n can be an integer. The ranges of tangent and cotangent are both all real numbers. The tangent increases from negative infinity through all real numbers to positive infinity between its asymptotes as theta increases, and the cotangent decreases from infinity through all real numbers to negative infinity between its asymptotes as theta increases. Secant and cosecant both have ranges that exclude the values between negative 1 and 1, but can be any other real number. Domains and ranges can be specified using different notations, so find out how your textbook does it or if your instructor has a preference. This chart is yet another trig concept I would encourage you not to commit to memory. I stepped through the logic for each of them, and you can too. If any seemed challenging, you can review them. Knowing how to figure out something quickly is much better than memorizing. 
This video is intended to lay the foundation for video TR-23 on the domain and range of inverse trig functions, but before that, I want to review inverse functions in general, and that's the next video, TR-22.